committed on Meaning and Mad Women by Suzanne Scanlon is not a single cohesive narrative, but rather a mosaic of reflections concerning the representation of female madness in literature, history, and the mental health system. Scanlon's exploration is both deeply personal, drawing from her own experiences and broadly literary, referencing the lives and works of various women writers. This complex interweaving of memoir, biography, criticism, and feminist theory dissects the stigmatization and romanticization of mental illness among women and the institutional responses to it. At the heart of the book is the author's candid examination of her own struggles with mental health, experiences with psychiatric institutions, and the impact that medication and diagnosis have had on her self-perception and creative process. Scanlon's narrative is interspersed with stories of historical women who have shared similar fates, either sequestered in asylums or dismissed as hysterical by a society that marginalizes their voices. One central theme the book grapples with is the link between creativity and madness, especially as it pertains to female artists and writers. Scanlon delves into the lives and works of writers like Virginia Woolf, Sylvia Plath, and Anne Sexton, each of whom famously battled with mental illness. The author considers how their psyches are deeply intertwined with their literary genius and how their emotional turbulence, rather than disqualifying their work, often fueled it. Scanlon explores the legacy of the mad woman in literature, tracing her lineage from the archaic trope of the hysterical female to the more nuanced yet still problematic portrayals in contemporary fiction. She examines how female characters are often confined to narratives of insanity, either as a form of oppression or as a simplification of complex psychological states. She critiques how the literary tradition has simultaneously objectified these women while occasionally liberating them, allowing for a space where their interior lives can unfold in intricate prose. In the same stride, the book scrutinizes the institutional responses to women's mental health. Scanlon presents a history of psychiatric treatment, revealing the often brutal measures employed to cure women perceived as mad, from the abuses of the asylum to the dehumanizing aspects of modern pharmacological interventions. The author argues that these treatments often silence and control women rather than addressing the underlying social forces that contribute to their distress. Scanlon's perspective is informed by feminist theory, which situates female mental illness within a patriarchal society that has historically pathologized women's emotions. She draws on the work of writers and theorists like Simone de Beauvoir and Elaine Showalter to argue that what has been labeled as female madness is frequently a response to the gendered constraints of society. Women's mental health issues, therefore, must be understood not in isolation but in the context of broader struggles for autonomy and expression. The memoir aspect of the book adds a profound, humanizing layer to these discussions. Through her own stories, Scanlon testifies to the loneliness and isolation that often accompany mental illness. She writes about the challenge of being a patient, of being viewed through the lens of various diagnoses, and the struggle to maintain a sense of self amidst the impersonal machinery of the mental health care system. Furthermore, Scanlon reflects on how these experiences have shaped her identity as a writer. She ponders how her treatment and diagnosis have at times put her creative impulses at odds with the need for emotional stability. The use of psychotropic drugs with their ability to flatten affect and alter consciousness poses a particular dilemma when it comes to creativity. Are the emotional depths that feed her writing also the source of her psychological suffering? And if so, must she choose between stability and art? As the narrative progresses, it becomes evident that Scanlon's work is a quest for understanding, a means to make sense of her experiences and the experiences of the women whose stories she shares. It is an act of reclamation, where she seeks to define madness on her own terms, not as a mark of shame, but as a nuanced state that encompasses extreme sensitivity, profound insight, and yes, sometimes pain. The book examines the therapeutic potential of storytelling itself, both for the individual and the collective. Scanlon suggests that writing can be a form of self-therapy, a space for women to articulate the unspeakable, to process trauma, and to craft their narratives beyond the confines of societal expectations or clinical diagnoses. 
It is an act of asserting agency in a world that has often denied them that power. Towards the end of the book, there is a shift toward hope and resilience. Scanlon discusses the importance of solidarity among women, the strength found in shared experiences, and the transformative power of community. Although she acknowledges the ongoing challenges within the mental health system and the persistent stigma surrounding mental illness, she also emphasizes the potential for progress through advocacy, understanding, and a redefinition of the terms around which mental health is understood and treated. In summary, Committed, On Meaning and Mad Women, is a layered work that blurs genres to dissect the portrayal and treatment of female madness. Scanlon presents a deeply personal yet universally relevant examination of the intersection between mental health, gender, and creativity. Through her intimate prose, she questions the social and medical frameworks that have shaped the understanding of women's mental health and offers a poignant plea for a more empathetic and nuanced approach. Her work stands as both a critique and a beacon of hope for all who navigate the complex terrains of mental illness, especially the women who have too often been silenced. You can listen to the full audiobook for free by following the URL in the description.